So this project started back in April of 2023. I'm gonna show you the full process here that I took all the way up till harvest. We planted some peppers and tomatoes in these raised beds. These raised beds are really great for more urban settings. You could toss one in your yard, really literally on top of the lawn and just build right on top of that. And the beauty is that you can move these when you need to. But because we have a gopher problem here, what I'm doing is using a quarter inch mesh to put across the bottom to keep out any gophers from coming up into the raised beds to eat the roots. Using a pair of metal snips here to cut along the contour of the top of that raised bed. And I wanna leave some extra room to overlap along the sides of the bottom so that it fits nice and snug there in the bottom and none of those gophers can get up on the edges. Folding over and pressing down all the extra mesh down to the ground here so that none of those sharp top surfaces will uh, be exposed so that if you're ever digging down into the bed you don't have the wire sticking up that could potentially cut your hands. So safety first. And on that note, you might want to wear a nice pair of gloves and some um, more durable shoes and flip-flops here. Uh, don't take my lead on that one. I feel really comfortable working with this material as I've used it quite a bit. So um, definitely take more precautions than I did here. So the mesh is nice and firm tucked in there and it really forms a, a nice seal. And we're ready to fill this up. So I'm going to start with a layer of native soil here from the property and we're just going to layer uh, the bottom and from there we're going to add a series of layers, a lasagna layer. And this is a hugo culture that we're building so there's a lot of different ways and materials that you can use to create a hugo culture. Uh, this is just one method and it's worked really well. At the end of the video, you'll see the poblano peppers that were cultivated in this raised bed hugo culture, aka the ancho chilies. And nothing other than what we amended this bed with was used to grow these peppers. No additional fertilizers. The only other additive we used was Jadam microbial solution. So you could very well start with logs or branches on the bottom, any kind of backfill of compost, kitchen scraps, really any organic matter you could throw in here on the bottom. What I'm doing though is strategically layering to get my wood chips that I'm using up a little higher in the bed so that really down about 10 inches below the topsoil, that will be where my wood chip pile is because I want the roots tapping into that zone. There'll be a lot of fungus activity that's eating that lignus layer. So I want the roots to tap into that. Hence the reason that I'm starting with the native soil. On top of the native soil, I did do a layer of compost and now we're adding raminal wood chips. These are composted wood chips that have been processed. When adding lignus woody material, it's important to note that there's a big difference between using logs versus branches. Raminal branches are the branches off of trees that are less than a five inch radius and they have a much higher density of minerals. So that's a very different component than adding big logs. So a lot of times people just think a woody material is woody material and it's really not all created equal. But usually what you want to do is start with your biggest logs on the bottom using the Hugo culture because they'll take the longest to break down naturally. And from there, you would layer larger branches. And on top of that, you would do twigs or wood chips. On top of that, you could do some leaf litter. So these wood chips were branches that were chipped down and composted in a big bin for several months. And they heated up to a thermophilic heat. And there was a lot of fungal growth growing through them. So they have been composted and processed down quite a bit. And now I'm walking through, compacting down. Generally, you don't want to compact your topsoil, but when you're making a hugo culture, it's really important to get everything really settled, all your layers really 
settled in. If you have big pockets and gaps, you're going to have settlement where it drops down. And it can also lend itself to housing rodents or other problematic animals. I have witnessed that one firsthand when I was part of a workshop installment of a hugo culture bed at a food forest in Williams, Oregon. And we actually saw a family of rabbits living in a big hugo culture because of the lack of settlement. Adding another layer of compost on top of our wood chips. So in this hugo bed approach, I've actually sandwiched the wood chips between two layers of the nitrogen rich compost here. And this is uh, something I learned in the past. If you don't balance your carbon to nitrogen ratios, then you can get in some problems with your hugo cultures. So it's really important to add the necessary amount of nitrogen with the carbon, especially if those wood chips or any of that lignus material you're adding has not been processed and composted down. Good ratio there would be 30 to one, 30 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. This is a great composting ratio. It also works really well in the Google mounds. Adding another layer of nitrogen rich compost here above the wood chip mounds in my second raised hugo culture bed here. I'm going to leave about 10 inches at the top you can see there for my topsoil. And here you can see this is some very rich compost from a local company. So we have several layers done, and now we're ready for a little kitty time. Now we're ready for the topsoil. This is a premium blend of topsoil. You want to use the best blend that you have for the very topsoil here. This is from the same company. We've got the compost, San Pasqual Valley soils organic soils and for the price point we've been very pleased along with jadam methods we've had some great success so i left a foot of headspace at the top of our raised bed hugel culture here for the topsoil and we can anticipate some settlement in the beds for sure when doing a hugel culture because i used wood chips so and I walked across and compacted them down in, I'm gonna have less settlement than say, if I did a bunch of branches and logs, you could expect a bit more settlement in those situations. So I'm gonna expect a little bit less settlement because I did compact in wood chips that were already pressed in to the mix, but that's all right if you get some settlement, you can always top off your bed and really, I look at this method as a soil building method that you're really culturing a lot of microbial diversity along with all that lignus matter that you're putting in here. And again, you can really tailor this to whatever you have on hand to fill up your raised beds. Again, you could consider things like your kitchen scrap compost. You could consider manure. You could consider leaf litter that you've raked up from the season, any type of trimmings from the trees, grass clippings, anything like that, but try to keep your carbon to nitrogen ratio around 30 to one, 25 to 30 parts carbon to one part nitrogen, and that should give you a really nice balance. There's several benefits to gardening with raised beds. A few of those are First off, you don't have to trench out hard compacted ground or do any heavy tilling. Number two, you get great aeration to your bed. So it's very hard to overwater a raised bed. Sometimes that will require watering a little more often though. 
in a gopher infested area, this is a way that you can really fortify your beds to protect against gophers coming in and eating your roots. I have had a lot of issues in some of our planted beds in the soil. If you have any good advice for combating gophers, I would love to hear. Please feel free to share and comment down below. So our two raised hugelkultur beds are now fully layered with our native soil, our layer of compost, sandwiched with the wood chips, with another layer of compost like an Oreo cookie, along with about a foot of great topsoil on top of all of that. And now what I'm doing is using a landscape fabric. This is more like a row cover that is a really light permeable fabric that I'm going to top off these beds. This just helps to protect the top layer, the microorganisms. It helps to retain some of the moisture in the soil and again, protect that top layer of microbes. Trimming up my row cover on top here, again to protect the beneficial microorganisms in the topsoil, really from the UV rays. I mean, anytime we're doing living soil, we always want to have some kind of cover on top. Whether that is a landscape fabric, which can be controversial, or a natural mulch, or a cover crop. I always use a permeable fabric, and I've had good luck with some permeable landscape fabrics. This is recommended in some of the Jadam method, but in the right situation, natural mulch is always a good way to go as well. And I'm just using some of these landscape stakes you can see here to stake down my fabric, and again, trim along the edges. Jadal Microbial Solution is a great inoculant to condition soil, to start some new beds, to apply before transplanting. It's really just a great way to add a diversity of beneficial microbes to the soil that will help to condition and build the soil as well as that symbiotic relationship that happens between beneficial microorganisms and plants. If you're seeking some guidance on culturing JMS, it's a super simple method using potatoes and sea salt. Check out this video. That about does it for our Hugel culture raised bed preparation. And now let's fast forward into the future to check out our pepper plants. October 20th, we can see our raised bed hugel is planted with these poblano peppers. And no feeds were added to this whole bed. The initial hugel that was charged with the manure and the inoculated wood chips here has provided all the nutrients for these pepper plants here. Some beautiful poblanos. So if you add the right amount of nitrogen to carbon, then you really don't have to feed in these hugel beds.
And of course, the ancho chili, also known as the papilano pepper, is the traditional Mexican pepper for Mexican cuisine for the illustrious chili relleno. And the chili rellenos are amazing in burritos or just alone by themselves. They're pretty easy to make. You just take the peppers, de-seed them, and dip them in an egg batter, roll them around in some flour, and then you can fill them up with slices of cheese. I use some pepper jack here. Grill them up in a skillet with some hot oil, and there you go. You got some chili rellenos. Delicious. Hope you enjoy and have fun in the garden. If you're liking the content, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, smash the bell for notifications so we can get those algorithms moving and keep the reciprocity. If you'd like to check out another Hugo Culture installation that was done off grid using all natural materials sourced off of the land, check out this video.